You're listening to the Precision Shooting Podcast, discussing all aspects of precision and long range rifle shooting. This episode is brought to you by Impact Dynamics, advanced training for the precision shooter. And now, over to your hosts. Well, hello and welcome to the Precision Shooting Podcast. My name is Rusty. This is episode number 86. And with me tonight is the usual squad. Greg, how you doing? Yeah, good. Self? Yeah, not bad. And over there, Andrew? Yeah, very comfortable. <laughs> very comfortable. Why would that be, Andrew? <laughs> uh, we're, we're in a slightly different uh, recording location. We are. We're at Chateau de Noble. <laughs> <laughs> Chateau or shit, chateau. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, you're you're at your place, and we uh, I guess we must apologise first up because if one of us falls asleep, it's, I, I can see that happening because this couch is really comfortable. It is. It's definitely ca- 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 <laughs> Andrew's already material. Andrew's already gone. Yeah, I'm I'm fairly there, but no, hopefully we don't have a, have any interruptions of children. That's uh, that's why oh, we're here tonight. Yeah. So. Yeah, should should right. lock the door, really, shouldn't I? Yeah, go do that. Go. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Jen, it's been a couple of weeks. Uh, well, it's been a month since we've seen you, Greg. How how have you been, mate? Yes, yes, good, good. Um, what's been what's been going on in your shooting life? I've oh, just been getting out, chasing foxes as usual. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so knocked a few over, just uh, on some small properties, and um, yeah, got yep. got onto a few. Um, they're starting to sort of pair up and. Oh, yeah. uh, they're not vocal yet, but they're they're pairing up, and you know that provides a few opportunities. Um, so, are you, are you seeing? Are you getting lots like two at a time? Or well, yeah? I had I had a group of four. Um, oh, right. all, full gang bang, all playing together. Right. That, that would have been three males and a female. Right. Um, and I, yeah, I spent a fair time getting into position. Because um, <laughs> were you one of the males? <laughs> <laughs> not 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 doggy style. Okay. Um, or a fox kind of stuff. But yeah, I, I could only, in this particular scenario, I could only move when there was cars going past, which was because I was so close <laughs> to them. But um, anyway, I was hoping for a two for one or a three for one. Didn't happen, so I only knocked one over. And you guys are in the gutter already. <laughs> I'm not saying. You've only had half a beer, you said. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, there, there's certainly um, <laughs> there, the there was a little speculation about your. Uh, Possible uh, yeah, well, international travels at last minute, so that was discussed. So you got back previous. in the country all okay, or yeah, yeah. You, you uh, seem to leave pretty quickly. Uh, you haven't listened to the last podcast, no. have you? We told <laughs> you. I actually don't listen to podcasts. I should start getting into it because obviously I missed it. Oh, Can't hit me with it. What'd no, you say? Yeah, it was some. No, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. The, the <laughs> listeners know. The, you're the only one that looks the fool at the moment because the listeners know, and and we just we understand that, Greg. Uh, you're just not willing to talk about it. You're not legally in a position to discuss your travels. So we understand. More than likely, you're not yeah. under contract. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we did. We did speculate it may have been a left-hander related mission. Oh, did I drown a few? Did I? <laughs> <laughs> you <tell> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Speaking of left-handers, you've been. Uh, what have you been doing today? Oh yeah, um, uh, Simo from the the Hunting HQ podcast uh, came round to show me his new lefty CTR ticker. Mm-hmm. He's uh, pretty excited about it. Um, yeah, nice little gun actually, little short barrel, twenty inch barrel um, thing. And the, you know they've got a pretty decent bottom metal and mag on them these days. And yeah, yeah. really weighted, really nice. But uh, you know, bolts on the wrong side. What more can I say? Yeah, yeah it is somewhat surprising they trust left-handers with more than a single <laughs> shot too. So yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 fair. It's fair. That's all right. Uh, and you guys did a little podcast out of that. Yeah. I haven't listened to that yet. That yeah, just a quick. Uh, that only went up like half hour ago, didn't it? Yeah, we actually just did it before I drove up here. Yeah. You know, it's pretty easy to do that <laughs> okay. stuff these days. That's what happens when you're a podcasting pro like you. you yeah, just, it was no, just yep, uh, bang one, standing the around one. in the shed and just <laughs> boom, bang it out, 10 minutes. So, um, yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, we just did a quick, you know, first impressions, the features, you know, the, the, the uh, what is it, buddy, uh, T3X over the T3 and yeah yeah just what we like about it and why Simo bought it and wh- what he uh ideally is going to use it for mm. um yeah so it's, it's a good little rifle nice little rifle I was going to ask what your impressions are but I guess if people want to know they can go and listen to that <laughs> yeah go have a listen <laughs> um cuz obviously that's quite a uh, quite a popular model for PRS style shooting the CTR yeah, it's it's definitely um, on. A, on, a, on a, do they do different barrel lengths on the they CTR? Do. Yeah, yeah. This this little twenty inch one, mm. it was you know, 
it had a really nice balance to it, you know. Okay. So if you were doing, you know, you know, I'm more in the hunting space, but um, you know, if you're taking standing shots at moving targets, you know, like say pigs or something, it's really nicely weighted. Yep. Um, for those sort of shots, and and I reckon it'd be pretty easy to throw around in a car if you were out on the farms and you know, mm. um, shooting foxes or, or rabbits or whatever. But um, yeah, nice little gun. Excellent. Mm. Cool. What about yourself, Andrew? You've been shooting at all? Yeah. I did actually. I fired yeah. two two hole shots. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. No. Well, typical deal. I I got uh, got invited to do some sort of pest control mm-hmm. work on on a property up sort of in the general area where Greg does a bit of shooting. I think. Yeah. Up yep. in the hills. So, um, usual deal. Got uh, got told. You know, there's heaps of heaps of vermin here that we've <laughs> got the okay to get rid of and we went up there and we shot two animals for the night so yeah, right. but i mean it's not the best time of the year not a lot of green on the ground up there True. yet so still uh, better better being out and shooting than the not yeah and i guess it's just making contacts as well you know, yeah so that's the big one right there um you know mm. and, you know do the right thing and we already got yeah. the invite back so mm. happy days yeah and maybe if i got a set of batteries for the uh, Fox Pro caller that actually worked for more than 30 seconds. We might have got a Fox or two as well. But. So, yeah. yeah, being prepared for next time I think would be good. That, that will uh, assist immensely. Mm. Very good. So. Well, it's been an exciting couple of weeks for me. Uh, well, exciting, I, I can lose, use the word loosely. It's been a hectic couple of weeks. Uh, we launched the PRS uh, comp details uh, last Oh, now my my weekends are all messed up now. And two weeks ago, <laughs> just just under two weeks ago, so yep. uh, put together a website on the Wednesday, and and the the damn thing sold out in twenty one hours, which yeah, is it's, amazing. That's awesome, isn't it? It's like, great. Uh, like uh, like scary, unbelievable. <laughs> like we um the previous year we sold out in thirteen days, which is you know sort of yeah you know, what you expect, sort of filled up over a bit of time. This time round, um yeah, it was it was just. Like yeah, full on. Um, not not expected at all. So uh, certainly we're going to be. Uh, we we actually opened up a number of places on the wait list to get a few more guys on board that we worked out we could handle. And if this uh, this method of how we're planning to run the match goes well, we should be able to accommodate more people in future. So yeah, very uh, good. that will be good. And there will be more announcements coming out about matches, hopefully soon. So. Which would be good because this one's all been a bit short notice in general. Every yeah. every aspect of it's been a bit short notice because we're scrambling to make it happen for everyone. But mm. uh, yeah, it should be should be really good. And this weekend, I'm going to go out and try some of the stages we've planned. Give me a crack. So I actually get to go shooting, which is nice. And um, we'll see how easy or hard they are. So I noticed you had a, a bit of a question for uh, podcast podcast listeners on Facebook about naming a stage. Did you grab any of those at all? Any of those good ones? Yeah, um, the the comp is still open. Oh, so right. there is a number of stage ideas, and uh, not ideas. Sorry, that, and that's probably one thing to clarify. We're just looking for a name. So we mm. uh, pretty much the the stages are all written. Um, there's been some interesting concepts come through. Um, but there's a couple of names I like, so I'm mm. eyeing off a few. I had I haven't had any bad co related ones though, which I'm you know I was a bit I guess disappointed. People, people about. can't really afford that, so <laughs> yeah, it's copyright. Yeah, yeah we, we wouldn't be able to afford the rights to, to, to the stage name. That's a fair point. And you, you certainly don't want to get uh, you know get sued for patent infringements. Yeah. That's uh, just you not can buy what the you T-shirt and not, not buy a man with that deep of pockets. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> The He's got short arms there, so that's all right. <laughs> the other thing that uh, we brought up in the last episode that related to that name PRS stage was the uh, what do we end up calling it? Anyway, anyway it's the the fundraiser weight drop fundraiser thing for uh, Soldier On. The so fat episode. The, from the fat episode, yeah. that was the one that Greg missed. Yeah, the, the episode yeah. was called the fat episode, Greg. So yeah, you know, oh, so okay. should listen to it. Um, yeah, so I have a pretty much. I think I've got all ten people who I was going to, you know, get him uh, get to have a bet with me about losing some weight or donating to a. Uh, we we sort of changed it. You probably heard that, or you guys didn't hear that in the last episode. But we I put an extra bit in there, where, rather than exchanging lots of beers. Um, if if I do manage to do what I'm trying to do, then uh, it'll be donations to Soldier On. Um, right, cool. organization so that should be good made a little video that went up on Facebook the other day so um, and got heaps of response out of that so um, I think if I think if I do actually manage to drop the 10 kilos it's going to be a 
three or four hundred dollars worth of of donation to um to them, which would be really good. Um, yep. And yeah, some there's a couple of guys who jumped on board for ten dollars a kilo, no matter how much I drop. Uh, up to 10 kilos. Even one guy said, if you drop more, I'll pay more. So, yeah, right um, on. even from all the way across the Dutch, um, Kerry from Precision Shooter has also said he'll pitch in, uh, despite not yeah, doing right the on. event. So, yeah, hopefully Very we can cool. raise a little bit of money. Yeah. Um, just to probably add yeah. as well, if people do feel like donating beer, um, yeah. they're more than welcome to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. Helps True. keep us conversational on the podcast, doesn't it? Yeah, just lubricates yeah. things. <laughs> this makes it all sort of slide along, just like Greg hunting foxes. <laughs> you had to go there. Other big news, uh, YouTube. I don't know if you guys have kept up with this. You guys don't, I guess, do much on I YouTube. I have heard a few little things about the changes they're making. Yeah. So gun policy on YouTube has uh, has has come or coming in or has come in or they haven't. It would no one seems to know when it will be enforced, what it will be enforced like, how strict things will be. But there's some uh, probably the best explanation I've seen from it was from John from eighty five forty one Tactical did a uh, video slash podcast slash went on Facebook and all this sort of gear about some of the the restrictions on what they want to restrict. Reading at like a top level, it seems um, that it won't affect the, the channels I'm involved with so much apart from possibly reloading stuff. Um, but the, the devil's in the detail and there's not a lot of detail. So, so what's the general gist of it at this stage? They hate guns. Like just <laughs> displaying guns? Uh, so they, I mean about they're talking hunting. specific things about like no nothing mentions hunting at all but like okay. full auto um, making silencers and bits and pieces right that's the, yeah, that's okay. what it sort of reads like yeah. but then there's things like you know like uh, anything that's the s- designed to sell guns so you know reviews might sit in under that yeah maybe. that's pretty open ended yeah and then they talk about firearms accessories the ones they list I think are bump stocks and, and high capacity magazines whatever that okay. means um, and then they say you know such as these things but they don't say only those things so accessories could be mm. um, a bag that you use with a gun in theory could be breach of that so as I said, the devil will be in the detail, which we probably won't know what that detail is because that mm. seems to be the way YouTube works. Yeah, but it's... Uh, yeah, probably won't release that detail. They'll just, discretion. at their discretion, just yeah. can whatever they want. You do whatever they want. Get a yeah. complaint and you're done. Yeah. So I know I know, John is moving his stuff onto Facebook yeah. as well as Full30. Uh, I think I've got that name right. And... The problem with with these other platforms is you don't get that uh, revenue from ads. Now, the I don't know if you guys know revenue from YouTube very well, but it is not much. You, mm. Per view with an ad, you're talking like a, t- a third to a tenth of a cent per view, and then that's shared 55 45% with YouTube. So the mm. yeah, it's not you have to have some serious amount of views to actually make to to actually fund a channel, but it cuts that out, and mm. and that's you know that might be an extra hundred bucks a a month or something helping towards a channel or you know it could mm. be could be hundred bucks a week. It really depends, but those those little incremental amounts will be gone possibly. So it's not not great situation for guns on YouTube. Uh, so hopefully something else comes along and it's a viable platform for it. That would be good. Or good to see the industry support these channels mm. outside of that advertising revenue that's done through like a YouTube yeah. format. And certainly if they push, if YouTube push people out, that obviously creates a, a you know an opportunity for another platform. So someone someone's going to snaff all that up. Yeah, I think yeah. it's almost a given. Well, I mean, YouTube haven't haven't really ever had a decent competitor ever, mm. and and other p- plenty have tried, mm. and and no one's really got there. So it's it's uh, it's scary when it's a monopoly like that. But I, yeah. I, I, I'm with you. I really hope someone. Do. I mean, maybe you could fund it. That go. Yeah, I'll get onto it. Why don't you just buy YouTube and change their policy? That's probably going to oh, work there's, easier. There's a much more sensible idea. Yeah. Oh, you guys, I need you for uh, strategic guidance. 
So anyway, we've we've seemed to have gone all serious there, but that's uh, that's something that that is affecting uh, the industry at the moment, and that's where if those channels uh, have a Patreon to support, like we do. And you do enjoy what they do, and eighty five forty one do, and a number of the other ones. That's a really good way where you can directly support this, these channels, and they will be out. You know, it doesn't matter where they upload their videos to, that you can actually support them on on creating those videos. So, I would suggest that go check out. I mean, check us out on Patreon. And massive thanks to all our Patreon supporters who we've had a few more jump on board recently. But also check out the other guys around as well because it certainly has a direct influence on on what they can achieve which is good anyone else got any sort of groundbreaking news no <laughs> <laughs> what have you seen greg you look like you've uh, you've recently seen something you want to i thought i mention. saw something from ab but uh, uh, it's probably in relation to the uh, bushnell was that the Bushnell app that we covered last yeah. year? Yes. Yeah, yeah, all right. You got you. Well, that one. we didn't get into much detail about it, did we, Andrew? We, we just sort of just Not said a lot. It, it exists. We touched on there yeah, that it, it yeah. was being done. You Are you running that? Uh, no, no. Um, all as I know about it is it's got sort of like an AB light engine in the in the background. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, and for the, um, the scope side of things, it's got all the Bushnell range. So sure. you can you know, put all your uh, range data on your subtensions and stuff. But I haven't played with it, no. Okay. I haven't yeah. played with it either, but I did listen to an interview with Nick Patalbo on Precision Rifle Media uh, on Kirk's show. And that was a really good show to listen to, by the way, that particular episode. Nick is, is as we know, he's been on this one, is, is a wealth of knowledge. But he talked in detail about that because I remember in the last podcast, we both sort of looked at each other and went, yeah, it's come out. Have you played with it? No. Nah. Have you played with it? No. Nah. Mm. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Good review. Nick talked about the the you know, what AB light sort of is. It's the back end to it, running it, and there's things that are limited. So I think it's only limited to 800 meters, so you don't get data beyond that. Yeah. And you can't adjust some things like scope height and bits and pieces. So so details that may not have as big an effect for you out to the 800 mark, but you if you're a long range shooter per se, then then it's not a suitable program for yeah. you. Yeah. If you're going out and you're trying to smack foxes at three, four hundred meters, it would be ideal. Yeah. So, so the reality is it would probably be pretty well suited for the majority of average hunters out there that aren't. Yeah, for sure. A lot of guys yeah. aren't interested in stretching it out past that no. eight hundred mark anyway. So. No. So it would be it would. It, Actually, Nick said it is a really good entry step. So if you are mm. thinking about getting into it, you can sort of utilize the program to the point where it no longer is is suitable for your school. And yeah. then you can, you know, jump into A B or something along those lines from there mm. on in. So, yeah, it's a good move, really. Mm. Get people introduced and keen. And uh, it'd be interesting to see whether other scope makers grab that sort of A B light engine and do a similar thing or whether it's locked down to, to Bushnell. I suspect other other manufacturers will mm. will grab that back end for sure. Mm. The other thing that Nick talked about in that show was electro optics. So talking about scopes that have more uh, more features in them from a you know, processing power and ballistic calculators and that side of things in there. He indicated without saying who, but he said virtually every major scope manufacturer is working on. Uh, scopes with with that aspect to it. We've seen. I know last show there was mentioned the uh, the Steiner. Or Steiner. Steiner, as, as Bronte, Bronte would call it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Uh, the and and we see the Revic, and then of course you know this comes back to some of the ones like the Burris Eliminator and and other such things like that. What's your guys' thoughts on on these types of things? I I'm serving two minds really. I think it depends what you want to do with it. I mean, uh, if you're talking from, say, a, a military perspective or something like that, or, you know, culling perspective, um, you, the easier you can make it to hit the target, the better. Like, you're sure. not trying to... If you can take out variables, you'll do it. Um, Less training overhead too, which is... Bloody. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, yeah, so just efficiency as opposed to, you know, say, competition shooting use where, you know, most people enter into those kind of shoots to sort of test their ability... Yep. And, uh, you know, a product like that, I guess, would have the ability to sort of level the playing field a bit, a fair bit more. So probably not quite as desired by the guys that really want to test their own abilities. Yeah, um, I don't, don't know, though. 
I don't know. So we, uh, Greg and I from uh, PRS had had this discussion the other day, like where we stand on them. And the, the thoughts were, and I wanted to get you guys' take on this, an optic that you can press a button, it ranges a target and then tells you what your drop is. Is that an advantage or a disadvantage on a PRS-style stage? Now, one of the givens here is that you know what the distance of the target is. All right? So let's say you know what the distance for the comp, you know what it is. Because, of course, if you get unknown distance stages you have a good advantage because you have a rangefinder there uh, built in with you. So on stages where you know the distance or the distance is within a guideline anyway and you could like look at the range because we're shooting square ranges, you, you can go, well, no, it's between sort of 250 and 300 because that's where it's sitting on the ranges and all these other targets around at a certain distance, all right? So taking the ability to range out of it, do you see that significantly beneficial or not or is it neutral or what are your thoughts i think if it um if it was just to give you a a readout in your field of view Mm -hmm. as to your hold yes it would give you an advantage probably it would save you having to reference back uh, something outside your you know your your scope whether it be a data card or whatever it would give you that small advantage um but if it was to actually illuminate a point a reference mark within the reticle somewhere so you don't even have to touch any of your turrets. Um, now, some of these new sort of ideas that are coming out don't incorporate just a rangefinder and, and, you know, sort of a, a yep. drop chart. It's It also takes into account a lot of other atmospheric conditions. Mm-hmm. If it was just to illuminate your point where to hold, and I think that would give you a huge advantage, um, saves touching your turrets, saves having to work out where you're going to be holding. It's just it would save a lot of time. Mm-hmm. So a time-saving thing, yes. I don't think it's necessarily going to give you an accuracy benefit uh, sure. if, you're, if you're running your your, you know, your software and your drop charts are all good. Probably not going to be more accurate. I just think the speed. All right, I'll throw something to you on that then. We come up to a stage and you've got five targets, okay? With, a, with this type of scope, you've got to be looking at the target press your button to then get your distance and your drop. You could pre-prep, you know, if you, you're running conventional, you pre-prep all your drops on a card next to it, on a sidewinder or something along those lines. You know what your drops are. So as you're transitioning between from, from target one to target two, you're already coming up to your hold point. So you just need to be able to see the target and pull the trigger. Whereas using electric setup, you've got to see the target, press the button, get the data and pull the trigger. I actually think it'd slow you down. What? Unless they have a feature where you can cycle targets, pre-programmed targets. Yep. But you then you, you, you're pressing buttons. Yeah. Well, you know, it depends how convenient that button is yeah, to press. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, you know, they they may look at, you know, I don't know how, how serious these well, no, guys no are. Well, no doubt that'll, that'll come into it one day. Yeah, yeah. About whether they're going to go into the, you know, the whole human factors side of things and do their, you know, proper, how are our end users going to use it Yep. You know, what do they need to pick up this scope over a standard scope, mm. you know, and really do their analysis and produce a product that's going to hit hit the mark. And I'm, re- I'm really keen to see what they come up with, you know. Yep. Um, if it's like you say, you've got to press a button and, yeah, it's probably going to have limited use. If you've got to range it, get the data, um, you know, it's probably going to have limited use in PRS. But if they have other features, there's, you know, potentially. Mm. It, it comes down to the design, I think. Um Sure. Yeah, like if you're shooting known ranges and you have that time to prep before, um, then no, I'm, I'm, I'm talking specifically PRS matches where you do you get a yeah at least a minute or two if you're first shooter and much more if you're not. But I mean that's also presuming that your targets are known distance. Now, are they generally in PRS events? I, okay, I mean, so the, the the challenge we would face is that yes, at the moment they're all known known targets uh, because we're working on fixed on, on square ranges. And one of the re- the decisions to make them all known is so that we can sort of reduce the cost of entry, so to speak. You don't have to have a rangefinder. One of the the challenges, though, with an unknown target is you couldn't do anything prior because you, in a PRS scenario, you can't touch your gun until it's your turn to mm. shoot. So mm-hmm. you couldn't range the if they were unknown, you would only find out the range of them when you're down behind the gun looking at it. Yeah. Um, which you know is potentially a bit of a downside as well. Mm. Uh, now, of course, if you had a rangefinder, you you 
flick around and have a look at it uh, and then go to your gun and, and back mm. it up. But uh, I, I don't like, I, I, I think, I guess my point is a lot of people sort of see them at the point they're up to as, oh, these will, these will change it. But for a comp, I don't think they're necessarily yeah. advantageous. Yeah, they've got an opportunity here to do it right and do it wrong. Mm. And mm. The, But the scenario there is um, if we do get to a position where we can use unknown targets, well, do you, you know, do you ban these things? <laughs> because they, they're not within that mm. spirit of how this, this particular stage is set up and then what do you do with them? Yeah, well, I, c- I could imagine be- them being quite expensive. Um, um, they're not too bad. Not too bad. No, the Revix are, are, are well and truly within the ballpark of many other scopes that are okay. utilised. I think, I think they're just yeah. under three grand yeah. US, so, yeah, yeah, it's up there, oh, but okay. not Yeah, it's ridiculous. not over the top. You know, you'd hate to be people ex- see people excluded just due to cost, you know, and not being able to afford to be competitive. This, this is a yeah, point that was raised um, up, yeah. Yeah, and... Um, yeah. Well, I guess in in regards to PRS events, it, it'll have to be determined as it really unfolds. I mean, once these things start to become issues, you need to contend with. Mm. At this stage, I guess it's fairly hypothetical as to not well, not really. It's going to happen, yeah. but it, yeah. when it becomes well, at the issue, moment, our, our our position in Australia is that they're not allowed to be used, and the reason we've done that is it's far easier to say no, and then say yes later yeah, on yeah, than to say yes and then take them out and then people who have paid money for them mm. can't, can't use them. So. What, uh, what is the limitation so far that's been put in? Because a lot of scopes have you know, digital features, i.e. illumination. Illumination is no, no concern. It'd, it'd be, the range finder would be the, the, the thing that you would be trying to uh, eliminate from, from the comp. What about the, the Barrett uh, bores system? If you want to use one of them, you'll... you'll <laughs> well, I don't uh, yeah, I'm just saying, advantage, but, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a fair call. Not one I considered. It n- it'd never been one I'd have been asked about from a PRS comp that I don't even know if they're made now uh, available for current scopes. Yeah, you uh, don't really see them around. No. So our, our topic for tonight is tripods because Andrew has been eyeing off Actually, both of you guys have been eyeing off some sort of tripod setup, haven't you? Well, I'm, I'm waiting for Andrew <laughs> to do all the work, <laughs> and then I'm going to steal his idea as usual. Yeah. I yeah. Just thought, thought there might be some sort of financial nice. uh, <laughs> sort of payment there, but anyway. Commission. <laughs> yeah. Good. So, so, so tell me, gents, why are you guys getting tripod setups? Why not? I mean... I <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Uh, why are you going to get them instead of buying another car? Why has why why they got priority? Well, the car I'm driving for the time being is, well, it's probably not far away from dying, but <laughs> I figure all right, out no, all right. it's a Just secondary priority. Let's, let's, why are you buying tripods? <laughs> um, I, I guess I've sort of thought about it for a while and yep. started sort of looking into applications and things like that. And I think there's just the versatility. If you get the right one, it seems, mm-hmm. you can be you know, versatile from sort of a, a high-ish prone position with the tripod in its lowest setting yeah. through to a standing position and, and still achieve fairly solid results. Yeah, it's it's not going to be as solid as a you know a bipod on the ground, a good bipod mm-hmm. on the ground with a with a rear bag, but you don't often need it to be, I guess. You know, I, yeah. I do recall you talking about um, some sort of longer range hunting up in the in the Flinders using it and you said the advantage it gave over having to you know guys having to try and find a a spot to go prone, um, I guess it's sort of been been in my mind for a while. Mm. So I sort of got to got to doing a bit of a looking, and, and then sort of I knew Greg had been talking about a something a different setup for use, you know, with the thermal. Um, so w- what's the appeal for you, Greg? Oh, well, at the moment, um, you know, when I'm night ninjing around with the thermal, <laughs> 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 um, I'm using a, a pair of. Uh, hun- hunting sticks. Uh, I thought he was going to say ninja stars. No, no. <laughs> yeah, they're illegal apparently. Um, Not for ninjas. Yeah. Um, I've got a pair of hunting sticks and they're, they're good good quality hunting sticks, uh, bog pod hunting sticks. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, I'm really happy with their construction and that, but I, I don't love shooting off them. Um, to, 
be perfectly honest. So what I do is I'll, I'm, I'll, I'll walk around and then I'll, I'll put the gun on top of the shooting sticks and it's got a swivel head and I can scan. Okay. Because yep. it's a thermal scope, not a not a viewer. And um, and then, you know, I'll pick up and I'll move a little bit more, scan a bit more, usually stalking in and, and eventually, usually for the shot, I'll actually put the shooting sticks down and get on my guts. Okay. So what I want to do, and, and quite often I'll do the stands, I'll, I'll be scanning off the sticks, put the sticks down to take the shot. Um because I just don't like right. shooting off. I'm, I'm shit on them, basically. <laughs> um, and so what I want to do is is get something a little bit more stable. Um, yep. But for me, I want something that I, I can sort of a little bit more mobile. So mm -hmm. yep. um, that I can sort of pick up reasonably quietly, move move on a bit, you know, put it down, scan a bit more. Um, so, yeah, really just to support. Fox shooting, basically varmint shooting. Cool. Yeah. Because I guess the, you know, the issue um, with the shooting sticks you're using currently is they're, you know, they're obviously not attached to the rifle, and you know you can't. It's it's a two-legged thing, isn't it? Yeah, correct. Two-legged, so, and it just has like a little Y. Yeah, I've got got ones very similar. Um, mm. And the, I guess the thing with that is, you know, if you've got a fairly heavy gun. You know, yep. with, a, with a heavy scope on it, mm. you can't. You have to hold it the whole time. You can't mm. just sort of let it sit there. Yeah. You know, and it's uh, yes, it does have a sort of a, a swivel feature, mm. but um, you know, sort of, you know, the more I've looked into a decent quality tripod, um, you know, the ability to have it actually affixed to it, so you you're not actually holding the weight of it up. Mm. You can sit there and scan a lot more. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, with a lot less effort. Yep. I, I think. Um, you know, possibly, obviously, you're going to be fairly mobile, so weight is an issue, I guess. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I think even for that kind of shooting, a good tripod system it would be a, a very big yeah, increase I'm, I'm, over what you've got currently. Yeah, very keen to make that shift. And then, you know, once I s sight something, I can just take the shot straight away, you know, rather than, yeah. you know, because you have to get on your guts. Obviously, that cuts down your options because then you're down in the grass and you, you can't lie there. You've got to wait for him to come around, you know, so that it, it adds complications. Mm -hmm. So as soon as, as soon as you can stay on that tripod and, you know, as you know, you've got, you both know you've got like wheat, you've got the stubble on the fields and so it just keeps you above all that crap. So, yeah. Yeah, but also that stability as well. I mean, yes, the tripod's not going to be as stable as going prone. Mm. However, you know, for the majority of your shooting, well, I mean, what would your average range be? 100 metres? Oh, you know, it's, it's it's rarely over 200. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. that's certainly from everything I've mm. been able to ascertain, you, you yeah. have no issue whatsoever you know, achieving that yeah. with a with a tripod setup. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can you can get yeah you can get a lot further than that um, comfortably off the tripod. So. Yeah, I mean, mm. it, it obviously you will see a decrease in accuracy from the ideal, but compared yeah. to shooting off shooting sticks, oh, um, yeah, or just standing. Yeah, <laughs> that's, but that's I mean, I, mm. you know, I guess the you know I've uh, I've sort of I think narrowed it down to what I'm after, but yeah, the I guess the issue probably for you, Greg, would be weight. Of yeah. the system, and, and that's where unfortunately the lighter you go, the more expensive yeah. it is, you know, to achieve the same stability mm, yeah, and all that kind of thing. So, and, and I guess that's where I've got to start looking at the old, you know, diminishing returns equation where you know, how much do I spend, and you know, how much weight loss can I get for that expenditure? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm asking the same question actually <laughs> between now and Paris. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Andrew, in terms of you, you've done heaps of research recently on on this sort of gear. What have yep. you? What are some of the things you've come across um, in terms of sort of mounting options, or like where where are the categories here that we're trying to decide between? Well, I mean, in taking out the actual tripod itself, because I mean, there's you know, lots of options when it comes to that. I, I've narrowed that down to one made by a Hulk Saddle. Yep. Um, yep. Or whatever, the Shadow Tech, I think, is it. I think so. Yeah, yeah. They, they've done one, which I think they've had it made for them to their spec, but mm -hmm. you know, it's just a fairly solid aluminium leg tripod, you know, rated to, you know, 50 pounds or something maybe. Okay. Um, yep. But, uh, you know, that's that's a, f you know, reasonable priced tripod. But then the issue was how do you attach the rifle? Um, yeah. I know you've got a hog saddle, and that was what I was initially looking at. Um, you know, they're not, not cheap not cheap at all, hmm. but they are good. Hmm. Um, then I started looking into sort of direct mounting to the rifle using the, the uh, Arca rails. Yeah. Um, initially, I wasn't so keen on that, but I think okay. I've come around to that now because there's very quick attachment methods, um, you know, like uh, the sort of the ball head 
I've chosen mm-hmm. at this stage anyway is a <laughs> made by really right stuff yeah. and it's got a one of the options is a, a quick to throw lever mount on that, that for the arca rail yeah so you know i've seen a few videos and it looks very quick mm. and you know guys that are familiar with it it, it looks quick and like greg said quiet as well it's yep. not a uh, not a sort of a noisy process i guess the only thing with that is that you have to have a rail mounted to the fore end of each rifle that you're mm. going to be mounting it um if you go with that system yeah but uh it it certainly seems that uh guys that are, have have used both methods using a rail attachment versus a, a hog saddle mm-hmm. have said that you you generally get a more solid setup with the rail mount okay um yeah right but possibly a little less tripod sort of hop when you're firing with the hog saddle. Yeah, the hog saddle's probably got a bit more give in it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, it seems to be the case. So, and, and did you look in? Because I know there's there's other the other way is is like a direct bracket for a particular gun. Like I know that uh, really right stuff do a bracket like for an AI chassis, which is yep. one chassis, one bracket, one you know mount, uh, but it's not not very versatile, I guess. Yeah, and look, the Arca rails are, I think, fairly versatile in mm. that, you know, they're obviously designed originally for, you know, camera equipment and that sort of thing. You know, and I was looking at, you can buy different length rails, right, you know, from a couple of inches long through to yep. full, full length, length of the fore. And, um, you and, know, and a number of chassis are now built built an Arca rail into their system. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I mean, I don't currently run anything with it built in. However, it's yep. no, no issue to, to mount one. Mm-hmm. And even you know, say with my rangefinder, it'd be quite convenient to oh, mount like yeah. a, a two-inch rail on the bottom of the the, the sh- you know the f- chassis I've got for that. Yep. You know, with the uh, doubler and everything on it, Converting. and that would go straight onto the tripod quickly. Everything to it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And and the arc rails, do they do they suffer anything under recoil? Is there? I haven't been able to find anything because I think it engages over a fairly wide area. Yeah, okay. Um, yep. I mean, look, it would be susceptible to if you dropped the rifle and it sort of bird the, the rail over, I guess. Gotcha, yeah. To the degree where I was actually researching titanium marker rails, but um, okay. I couldn't find one. <laughs> Greg, maybe you might have to get onto that. So, um, yeah, look, I mean, it, it, that's another issue, I guess. Mm. It depends on how you're going to be treating your gear and what you're going to be doing Not with it. Not well, usually. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, speak for yourself, I guess, but... <laughs> Um, look, my personal interest, you know, I, I'm interested in PRS and whatnot. I, I don't have a, a burning desire to be, hmm. you know, competing. competing yeah. um, my more interest is more in, in long range hunting yep, and for sure. informal long range target shooting. Yeah. Um, so I'm probably not going to be bashing my gear around as much, you know, smashing it into barricades and whatnot, hmm. um, as a lot of guys might be. Yep. Um, and then again, you know, like, I mean, it, even the, the speed of removing a gun out of a hog saddle, you still got to undo the hog saddle and then take the gun out of it. So it's really, yeah. I don't think you're going to save any time with a hog saddle as opposed to the Arca rail. So hmm. yeah, that's yeah. sort of one of the reasons why I sort of said, to, you know, Greg, is what I've settled on, and I, I don't think you're going to lose out in, you know, in say for Greg's scenario of walking around a number of you know stationary spots then walk and sit set up again hmm. if you need to take the the gun off the tripod yep. it's a quick process mm. you know so um yeah look at that that's sort of at this stage what i'm thinking i mean you can get bogged down there's just so many different opinions on what to have whether you go with a you know like do you go with a like a ball head on the top of the tripod or do you direct mount onto the top of the tripod and yeah. yeah um, sometimes you're a bite well, just, bullet and give it a go. Just you? before yeah. we go to that next point, like on the, the mounting system. So I've got a, uh, a hog saddle and, and the great thing about that, the reason I, I really like that is because we run it in heaps of comps and we'll continue to run lots of comps and it doesn't, any gun will go into it. So you can just instantly, you just keep the, the bracket wide and you drop a gun into it, shoot and then pull it out. Now it's not going to be the most secure setup or anything along those lines in that arrangement but as far as a comp goes, is a drop in shoot, you know, it works well for that scenario. An arc rail certainly wouldn't wouldn't achieve yeah, that purpose no. in, in that scenario but if you were using it obviously in a comp and you were using your own tripod and such it would be, uh, it would be Yeah, I mean look, suitable. obviously a lot of guys like the hog saddle, mm. um I don't 
I don't think for the majority of applications, it's gonna you're gonna get a massive advantage either way. No, what, what I didn't realize is I I my hog saddle is mounted on my uh, on the um, what's that thing called the ball joint the ball head. Yeah. Okay. Good. I just didn't want to be you know. Part Saying of, ball head. Well, part air. of the cricket team and. Uh, well, you could rub a bit of sandpaper on it, might hold it a little bit more securely. <laughs> That's it. Get some reverse swing on that gun. Uh, without. If you sandpaper down one side of your bullet, would that? Anyway, yeah, sorry. Go around corners. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Just, you know, if one of the ROs saw you, you'd have to just quickly ditch that sandpaper down. But anyway, um, so what I didn't realise is on that ball head is it's actually an arc rail. So I've got an arc rail mount yeah. uh, on it, but I don't have any guns that have the arc rail. So I, now it's sort of made me think, oh, well, I mean, I wanted to get an arc rail for a bipod that I could move up and down the, the front of the stock. So now I have another reason. It'll mount directly to that same setup. Yeah. Uh, w- what research did you do on the ball heads? Well, I mean, again, it goes into how much you want to spend. Um, I started by going, all right, well, what's the weight rating? And yeah, I know a few guys that are really into their photography. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they said, well, you, you want to go go substantially over what you're actually going to be putting on it, yeah. In, if you want it to be stable, of course. So then, just obviously started researching what people are using, and you know, there's a lot of brands out there that, you know, the sky's the limit. So you basically have to go, well, what's what's the mo- most I'm prepared to spend? Yeah. Um. You know, what do I want it to do? Um. And I settled on the really right stuff. I think it's the BH55. Is the oh yeah, we all know that one. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Moving right along, <laughs> and uh, you know it's a, it's not cheap, um, but it has the like a quick throw mount for the yeah. arca rail on it, or yeah. as an option, and it's it's uh, just under five hundred US dollars. Okay, but uh, again, you know, there's no need for any other saddle or any other attachment to that. No, that's it. That's you the just end of, you end got the arca rail on your gun, bam, yeah, straight okay. in. Um, yeah, nice. So, and you know, in sort of in pairing that, uh, there's a few arca rails I was looking at for the actually mounting on the gun um, mm-hmm. area 419 do a good one which is full length yeah for a, for a stock yeah I'd have one on order yes okay yeah and it, well you'd obviously be aware that they've got a barricade stopping everything on them sure yeah didn't even look did you <laughs> that's a very Badco-esque thing to do <laughs> just buy it I well, I need an for a for a, a stock I'll, I'll buy that but one but yeah no that, that's good but the only issue with that um, it's quite long it does protrude past the fore end substantially. Does. So does the barrel though. It depends what you're trying to mount on it. I was umming and ahhing with, um, I still am I guess, with a uh, Elite Iron bipod. Oh, okay. And the mounting yep. system on them basically re- relies on a, a, a short Picatinny rail on the fore end up sort of close to the, the end of the fore end. Okay, yeah. Which is not going to work with that rail. Now, I mean, you could always go with a shorter rail that didn't mm. protrude that far. Or I could always just go, I don't really need to spend $700 on a bipod that I've already got things that will do the same job. But, <laughs> I mean, I guess the advantage with the with that longer Arca Rail, the, the Area 419 one, is that mm. um, you can get the adapters to mount a Harris bipod and slide it up and down yeah, that rail that's and you I'm, can go right I'm forward. For. Yeah. You know, the further forward you go, the, the more solid your system is. And I've seen yeah. a couple of guys using that and it looked very good, it looked solid. Mm. Mm. So... I'm, I'm not 100% convinced or sold on exactly which rail I'm going to go for, but I, I think I've got the tripod side of things sorted. Nice. And and then, so so tripod itself, what are you, you're looking at the one from Hogsaddle? Is that what you're yeah. thinking? What else did you look at? Um, well, there's just a, a myriad of options. Um, you know, Manfrotto <laughs> obviously do Lots. heaps. Yeah. And again, a weight rating, um, just general, big... general reviews on sort of how stable they are what they can do, uh, how low mm-hmm. they can go, things like that. Because mm-hmm. I'm not really interested in a tripod that can only go down to sort of sitting level. It'd be nice to be able to go down to yeah. low. Prone, basically. Yep. So that yeah. was a concern and consideration. Okay. And I know I, you, you... I've got the Mission Critical yeah. design. Yeah. A, um, PRST, I think it is. Precision Rifle something. Tripod. Tripod. Yep. Yeah. So shooting tripod, probably. Yeah, possibly but I mean that uh, possibly. You know, that tripod obviously is a good one a very good one uh, And I, but sort of from the research I've, I've been able to find mm. 
that tripod that you know, in relation to the one I'm looking at, it's a lot more expensive, but it's a lot lighter. Yeah. And I think the 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 gains there are not so much in stability or anything like no. that. It's in weight savings. Yeah, sure. Um, and not probably stronger, but mm. you know the one I've chosen certainly uh, rated to take the weight. Take, you know, take the weight, but it's a bit heavier. It is, yeah. yeah. And and that's where that that particular drop. But I've, I've got a number of tripods, and I wanted something that was very light. That when when we do filming and stuff, I could take like if we're going to go hike, <laughs> if we're going to go up a mountain of some sort, uh, being able to take like having one option that, of a tripod that is really ultra light, that can give me everything with the from a from a camera point of view. May as well like you know may as well spend the money on one of them, and, and then that that can be the shooting one uh, pr- yeah. predominantly, and it is predominantly. But yeah, I guess you can, you know, if, if on your scenario, like if you just want to get a, a three hundred dollar Vanguard tripod, which are really solid, really good, and they will take the weight, but they're not very light and they're quite big and cumbersome. Uh, yeah. That's what I usually no- normally for cameras, um, because they are absolutely rock solid and shot off those to a, for a long, long way away. But the yeah, the, there's that flip side of, of how versatile they are. So oh, I've been really happy with that mission critical one. Yeah, look, I mean that was that was one of the ones I was looking at, but for the applications I yep. intend to use it for, Wait, I would rather put the money elsewhere. Yeah, sure. Um, as long as I'm getting the stability I need, the weight mm. wasn't the critical one. What I um, may I may question that if I'm <laughs> hiking up some ridiculous mountain up in the Flinders. I'll get a phone call. Can I borrow the <laughs> borrow your travel? You were right. I should yeah. have just bought it. Yeah, but you know, I'd, maybe I just need to harden up and carry a bit more. You know, but <laughs> so that's not the the primary consideration for me, but it may yeah. be for Greg. Yeah. So Greg, with yours, weight is going to be a, con- a factor, isn't? Because you're going to be walking around with this thing if you're going to mimic yeah. the same style. <clears throat> yeah, I've got to look at that. Um, you know, I'm sort of hoping. Um, you know, it's it's quite. Well, it looks like it's quite simple to de- to detach the rifle and, mm. and drop it into a sling scenario, and uh, hopefully the uh, you know I'll go as light as I can. But if I'm only carrying the the tripod for a, for a bound, yeah. um, I'm probably going to be pretty happy. Um, you know, and then put the rifle back on. Well, again, yeah, you're not carrying it for a long time. No, you get no. out and go for a wander and then come back. Yeah, I, I usually just you know sort of do twenty meter bounds when I know foxes are in the area and gotcha. Yeah, just um or I'll I'll just be stationary a lot of the time and they, they eventually sort of come and visit. Um <laughs> so yeah, I I'm not it's not gonna kill me, but um you know, potentially if I get the right sling scenario and, and I can put it over my shoulder, uh I, I think um, you know, I'm probably better off in the current scenario anyway. Because mm. I'm sort of Holding the rifle on the hip, it's quite heavy. Yeah, you know, I've got the sticks under the arm, and you end up actually with a pretty sore back at the end of the night because mm. you're trying to keep upright can't, with the can't. weight forward of the gun. Okay. Um, I think he's just yeah. waiting for me to buy the tripod I've chosen, then he can run mine and yours, and yeah. compare them, and go and yeah, then I'll buy go both. Them. Yeah, I didn't know you could read mines. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> with your the tripod you're looking at, Andrew, the the um the way to extend the legs. What sort of option is that is it like one of those twist locks or is it a little lever do you Good know point I, I think it's a lever okay locks i yeah yeah i i uh i've got both to, on different tripods and i have found that on that one my the the mission critical one is a lever and and that has been very Good. It's it's a bit more. It's not as quick to flick out and, and pull back in like the the spin ones are or the twist ones are really good. But I've had a number of those twist ones fail on me, and once yeah, they and go, them, yeah. uh, they're gone. Like they're mm. very you, know, you can't fix them easily. Whereas those when those lever ones get loose, you can, you can hit them. it with the Allen key and tighten it back up, and and away you go. So yeah, yeah. I in a shooting scenario. I prefer the lever one. In a camera scenario, I prefer the twist one. Yeah, um, probably yeah. just to support that. I know Bogpod use the sa- uh, use the lever style in all their designs, so they've they've gone for that as well for shooting dedicated uh, tripods and bipods. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're just looking at a at a picture of it now. It's, yeah, it's definitely a lever on the uh, on the uh, hog yeah. saddle one. That looks tough as. I saw a, a tripod that. Uh, Lovis gear we're bringing in. I'm, I'm just going to look it up. Uh, what what it is, but we had one at the uh, the 
Impact Dynamics night the other night about what guys were carrying in their backpacks for mm. comps and stuff. And this was quite a small one. And, and what it did is the, the head of the tripod, the legs folded back over it. So, you know, normally you'd have your head at the top and your, your legs down the bottom. Mm. That makes mm. sense. That's why they called what they called. But the legs would actually fold up all the way around. And so when it was, you know, stored, it was actually a lot smaller than it ended up being uh, out of the... Oh, okay. Out of the... Yep. Um, like storage setup. And it just, yeah, I mean, like it, it looked at it and went, that's small. And they... Bronte opened it up and went, oh, okay, it's actually normal sort of size. Yeah, okay. I, I th- I'm just going to try and find the brand. But they, I thought they were quite a, a good option. And I think I saw um, uh, Jim from Low Viz actually using one at a comp uh, on the weekend. I've just looked up the cradle, not the actual tripod. Yeah, so I'm just uh, you know, looking at a couple of pictures here and I – you know the versatility of this one. Like I've got a picture here of it, ex- well the legs extended right out. Yep. And you know they've got a hog saddle in the top of it, but you know to the to the sort of the flat on the uh, the base of the hog saddle is 12 inches. You know it looks about mm. 11 to the top of the tripod, maybe just under. That's pretty low. Yeah. And then you know the same tripod can take you to you know standing height. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is I mean, it is it three legs or is it four? Try is three. No, sorry, from what I mean. Y- it's yeah, not a you're quad right. Pod. You're right. Are you not talking about quad pods? No, that's oh, next okay. next episode. Pod right. Pod. <laughs> yeah, then yes, what's, it's a three legged tripod. What? <laughs> what I meant was the the leg extensions. How many how sections? Many? Yeah, three sections. Three. Yeah. So that, that's the other the other one that I, the mission critical one is a four uh, four extensions, and that can get to a height where I can't get onto it to shoot it's too tall yeah, okay. uh, which is i guess a, a good thing mm. if you're going to grow a bit yeah you grow into it yeah. well if you're shooting uphill <laughs> could be really useful or useless yeah, <laughs> or useless yeah either one excellent so what's the what's the final the final things you're running you're running that that really right stuff Hit, ball head? What I am going to run. What are you going to run? Yeah, look, that that's the one I... Is this the call out for sponsorship? <laughs> yes, it is. Really right stuff. You want to sponsor us. Times um, two. <laughs> ah, three. <man. laughs> but uh, no, look, that. I mean, there are plenty of options um, that would be cheaper than that and would probably be fine. Yeah. Yep. I just, I don't know, I guess I'm at that stage where I'd rather just buy once and have... Cry you once. Know, yeah, yeah, have a really good piece of kit. <laughs> so I mean, it's a really good cry. Yeah, Just get it all out of the system. That's it. Yeah, but then I won't have to cry after that. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to make a comment about having four children already, but yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, you have um, plenty of crying coming on board. Yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've come to that realization already. But <laughs> look, I mean, there, there probably are other ones that would do the same you know, job. You're not really going to notice any major improvement, but mm-hmm. just the reviews on that particular model. Yep. Just said so it's just first rate. Yeah, I think you know the same thing could be achieved with a cheaper unit, but um, mm. just all the reviews as far as even with substantial weight on it, yep. um, you don't need to really like lock it down hard to stop it from holding. You know, it'll hold in its position well. You know, it's not gritty, it's smooth, mm. and you know, if you're particularly if you're panning around, you don't want to have to be fighting it. You want to be you easily set the tension to a degree where it's just. Easily the pans around. Mm. That weight side of things, are hu- that weight rating is a huge thing. I remember a guy who bought a tripod, and it was probably twice the price of one that I, I had because it was, it was a much lighter one. But it was the weight option on it was, was just like a, not a tenth, but like a quarter of what mine was. And he was very disappointed with it because it just was not stable with a heavy gun on it. It was yeah. just almost yeah, okay. useless. Good consideration. Mm, so yeah. weight rating and, and the advice you were given are always going above what you think you need. Mm. Yeah. Do that and, and more. Mm. Yeah, I mean, this particular one's rated at 55 pounds, so yeah, right. that's plenty. Yeah. yeah I mean, probably you're not going to be putting any more than 17, 18 pounds on it, really. Mm. So, Absolutely. Mm. And the, the, the backpack or the bag under the tripod is a huge advantage, getting some weight underneath that gun. Uh, really adds to stability. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's sort of again fairly common. The thread comes through if you got the opportunity to hang yeah, hang weight off it. Under there. Yeah, well, this yeah. the one I'm looking at does have yep. that, and um, as, as probably a lot do. Mm. Um, but even still, you know, they said yes, that does increase the stability yep. substantially. But 
if you're just trying to shoot that's it. In, a in pig Greek or a scenario, goat, that wouldn't, mm. wouldn't be beneficial or easy. Or hang the no. fox pro off it, or a fox. <laughs> <laughs> Got to shoot it first. Or a though. fox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Easy. So yeah, I mean that, that's sort of where I'm at. I, I may tweak that idea, but um, okay. yeah, I don't think I'll be disappointed with that setup. No, no, I certainly wouldn't be. And uh, and then I guess Greg will decide on which way he's going to go. I'll pretty much copy him. I reckon. <laughs> no, I'll, I get I'll, that. Yeah. I get that. He's going to no. take he's going to take mine away, yours away, and then just like f- f- change bits over and swap them around. Oh, look, look, when the slush fund's got some slush in it. <laughs> I'll, uh, it. I'll sit in and have a chat with Andrew. But um, no, look, he's done the research. He's done the numbers. Yep. You know, why do it twice? Hmm. Um, probably just I'll look at some other considerations around, you know, how quiet it will be to to fold up and move and open up and, um, you know, just those sort of small sort of hunting-based stuff. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I'm very much in Andrew's line of thought where, you know, buy good, buy once um, hmm. and, and don't regret what you buy um you know that's a big thing for me but yeah no i'm i'm, I'm pretty keen to it. you know hopefully andrew gets his first um <laughs> and i can <laughs> suss it out i can borrow it every weekend brilliant <laughs> but uh yeah no very keen to check it out i mean that, that that is the trouble with with a system like this unless you can actually find someone with exactly what you want hmm. you are taking a gamble to a degree and i think i don't think i'll be disappointed at all with this setup no. um it's just a matter of I guess biting the bullet. All right, so it. should we should we put it out there? If you run a tripod setup, we want to see some photos of it and tell us about the the kit that you use and what your experience has been. And let's see if we can throw either Andrew off the track and uh, make yeah, him do some more hard. research, or like confirm it. for him that uh, it uh, it is the way to go. So, well, I mean, I guess the thing is, if if anybody's got experience with multiple different systems or different attachment methods yeah, and things like fair that, point. that's going to be a lot more advantage because you know like guys who've got their hog saddles they'll love them and they'll give good opinions of them mm. and i don't doubt that guys that are running a good arca rail system they'll say the same thing yeah um and i guess it depends on what application they want to use it for too but sure guys that have actually used both yeah really that that's sort of the the opinions that are more difficult to find mm. well if you if you fit into any of those categories still send us a photo of it it's good to see good gear we'll, we'll share it out yeah, no, absolutely. Not really complain about that, but especially if you've had some experience across platforms, that would be amazing to uh, to find out. Help us, and then we'll put yeah. the word out there and share that information around. Sounds good. That would be good. good. Excellent, gentlemen. All right. Any plans for the next? Uh, we're at Easter in a day or two. Any any plans? Getting shooting? Yep. Well, I'm yep. I'm going to have a sniff for a couple of deer. Um, also, uh, yeah, my usual. Rounds of the farms, um, yeah, but I'm not going far. So, uh, all Couple my properties, yeah, that'd be good fun. Yeah, yeah. Now the the property's pretty opportun op- opportunistic in okay. that they just cross this property like transitional. Oh, okay. And so you sort of uh, got to get lucky. Basically. And it's coming into that rut now for the fallow deer, definitely for yeah. the fallow, maybe for the reds as well. So. Yeah, not. Um, yeah, I think it's around Easter, isn't it? The rut mm. kicks in. 